What would happen if our planet turned into two separate ones, one consisting entirely of land and the other one of water? Could we survive on any of them? And how? Well, you're lucky, because I'm going to answer this question right now. So let's imagine that our Earth has turned into two separate planets sharing one orbit. Let's call these hypothetical planets rock and water. I know, I know, very original. Anyway, let's start with the rock, because this one is much easier to imagine. All we should do is ask, what would happen if all the oceans on the Earth suddenly dried up? Now, we know that water is life. It covers 70% of the surface of our planet. There's so much water that even if all the oceans and seas disappeared, some of it would still be left in underground rivers, streams, and so on. But unfortunately, it would not be enough for us to survive. All sea creatures disappear. After some time, all other animals, plants, and of course, people share their fate. Completely dried forests burst into flames sooner or later and burn until there is nothing left but ashes. But hey, it's not that bad. Well, it is bad, but life can still exist, in some form. There are some bacteria that make cockroaches jealous. They're able to survive absolutely any conditions. For example, extremophiles have already evolved to live without water. These little guys can survive in an incredibly hot or acidic environment without water or even sunlight. Without them, the rock becomes an empty, lifeless planet. Although, who knows? Maybe someday, extremophiles will be able to evolve into some wildly cool forms that can survive literally anywhere. But for now, the rock is just a floating rock, basically. Oh wait, did you imagine a hot desert or some sort of red-hot steps? Surprise, surprise! This planet is actually extremely cold. You see, without water, there would be no atmosphere. The atmosphere consists of a concentration of various gases, including hydrogen and oxygen. Some H and O, you know where this is going, right? Yep, no water, no atmosphere. And since it is the atmosphere that accumulates all the heat we need, the planet would be very cold without it. The contrast between cold and less cold places also becomes very sharp. You see, water is basically a climate stabilizer. The oceans absorb almost all of the heat of our sun. They distribute it evenly over the Earth to make sure it doesn't get too cold or too hot. So without it, the rock gradually turns into a cold desert. The average temperature on this planet is around minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. At both poles, the temperature is extremely low, about minus 300 degrees. And even in the warmest places, it doesn't exceed 20 degrees. These warm places are now the former oceans, because their dried up depths are located much closer to the hot core of the planet. Wait, I hope you don't imagine this planet as covered in snow, either. We don't have any water at all, remember? It's just a very cold rock. At this point, we're just a bigger and browner version of the Moon. The Moon is basically a waterless piece of Earth, after all. But hey, what happens to volcanoes? They're basically our last hope to stay warm, aren't they? Unfortunately, volcanic activity is decreasing due to a lack of water. You see, volcanoes and their eruptions happen because of the collisions of two tectonic plates, the oceanic and continental ones. The weight of the water presses on the oceanic plates. They go under the continental plates and form volcanoes. So if there's no water weight, then there's no volcanoes and volcanic activity drops significantly. The rock now is just a planet full of many incredible high mountains. And every time the tectonic plates collide, they form more and more of these mountains and trenches, including some very big ones, like the famous Mariana Trench. I would say, be careful not to fall, but hey, there's no one to fall there. So, Also, there's no weather anymore. No water means no more snow, ice, or rain, or even clouds. The wind would probably be quite strong, though. Well, that's the fate of the planet rock. Not very bright, so let's just go see how the water planet is doing. Many, many billions of years ago, I wasn't around then, our Earth actually was a planet entirely covered with water. Then, about a billion years ago, the sea level dropped, the land appeared. This has changed the atmosphere of our planet forever, and that's how life was born here. But what happens if it returns to its original state? Well. To answer that question, we should first learn more about the ocean planets. So what does one of these look like? Oh, sorry, I almost forgot. We have no idea. We haven't found any planets of this type because they're incredibly rare. 
I mean, there is one planet that is low-key and could be called an ocean planet. Yeah, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Still, even this one doesn't look the way you probably imagine. The water on it is in a very weird, unique state. Scientists have called this hot ice, or super liquid water, and we've never seen anything like this before. In general, though, the actual ocean planets are very hard to find due to many physical reasons. These planets require very specific temperatures, pressures, and so on. But alright, just hypothetically, what would such a planet look like? Well, first of all, of course, it cannot be made entirely of water. I hope you didn't actually think that there could be just some gigantic water blob spinning around a star. It should still be a planet with a core and some kind of foundation. So let's just imagine that all the water on the former Earth has mixed into one giant salty ocean. Wow, that would be a dream come true for the sea creatures, but not for the rest of us. The only animals that could survive in this situation, except fish, are probably the birds that can swim and feed on fish. Now, I think even if the sea level rose significantly, at least a couple of islets could still stay above the water. Such islands would be the former peaks of huge mountains like Mount Everest. So if these birds build their nests there, they can even survive for some time. But what about you and me? Well, we still have a chance. If we had enough time to prepare for the huge flood, we could stay safe either in giant submarines or on giant ships. We can grow food on board and fish from the ocean. But without the Everest Islands, we are unlikely to last long. If something breaks and we have nowhere to dock, we won't be able to fix it. Unfortunately, we no longer have drinking water. Now we can get it only from rain or by filtering seawater. But we have to store it someplace, right? And all these water containers would take up a lot of space and be very heavy. But in general, planet water is not as bad as it might seem. It's quite warm. The average temperature here is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And the gap between the lowest and highest temperatures is minimal, from minus 20 degrees at the poles to 70 degrees at the equator. Compared to planet rock, this ain't bad at all. Planet water would also be slightly larger than the Earth in radius due to the volume of, yes, water. The density of this planet would be, on the contrary, quite low. The gravity could become a bit weaker, too. Now, as for both planets, if we place them in the Earth's orbit, after some time, they would still move away from each other and follow different trajectories. They would have aligned themselves not to collide with each other. On one of them, the year would last 12 months, and on the other one, 10 or 11. And that's about it. A fun fact. All of this can actually happen in the future. First of all, the Earth's crust is gradually becoming thinner. Hey, I like thin crust on my pizza, on my planet, not so much. So one day, water can really flood our entire land. On the other hand, in a couple of billion years, when our sun begins to expand and turn into a red giant, all the oceans on our planet will really dry up. All right, take a deep breath and shake it out. That's enough of this grim fairy tale. It's a waste of time to worry about such things so far off when, today, I can't find my wallet anywhere. I thought I put it over here. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.